Yeah, yeah. 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 Who were the producers? Does that have? Uh, thank you, Beth. Uh, Eric Marcus, you take it, Master Beth. As a day worker, had to be away for this week. Uh, Pete Bales, Mark Weinstein, and Mike Swick for the programs, and Jim Gunnell for the website. Dan, if you're available, turn to do the invitation, please. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So, good afternoon. Would you all join me in prayer? O oh, Holy Creator and Sustainer of all that is or ever will be, accept our thanks for this day and its blessings. We ask that you guide and direct our love, its leaders, our actions. Grant each of us may feel our responsibility to Rotary, to our community, to our country, and indeed to all the countries and peoples. Bless our fellowship today, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies in your service. Amen. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I need to, 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 I need how to send her guests and follow the universe. Okay, he sent Thanks. I, I thought he said that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I have Joy Kitzmiller, our treasurer, with us today. Hey, Joy. Uh, Shannon, how's the guest? I've got Abby with me over the big table. Hey, right. uh, Pete, <laughs> I have uh, Monica Jones uh, here, assistant uh, city manager, and Zach White, uh, parks director. Great job. Uh, and then Josh, I'm here. Uh, 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 Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians, all of our guests, and our incredible lineup of speakers today. October 4th, aka the 271st day of the year, which means we are over 76% of the way through the year. And if you all knew that this sergeant at arms segment within the is going to be the quickest one ever since we are loaded with great speakers, I think you all would have given me a standing ovation, but it's okay, we're aware, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> For members' birthdays, we only have one coming up uh this upcoming week, and that is Beth Kuzak on the 10th. Uh, Park days. Uh, Dan Tobias's wife um, also has a birthday on the 10th. Uh, Dave Kuzak is here to hear that his partner has a birthday coming up, but I uh, know attorneys tend to remember all those things, so I have no doubt that he will not forget Beth's birthday. Number anniversaries, Paul Otten has eight years coming up on the 7th, and Melissa Quinn has one year coming up on the 6th. And wedding anniversaries, I think this might be the first wedding anniversary from a Beaver Creek Rotarian that will be celebrating it in Europe, Brandon uh, and Ashley will be celebrating their anniversary overseas. Uh, moving on to some good things that happened this day in history, 1876, Texas A&M, which is home of the legendary Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Manziel, opens as the first public college in Texas. 1915 in Colorado and Utah, the Dinosaur National Monument was established because, believe it or not, they found a whole bunch of things there, so why not make it the monument? Uh, 1927, the Mount uh, Rushmore began to be uh, against uh, getting sculpted, and I think I heard somebody earlier here say that people that we have presenting here today would be considered the Mount Rushmore of Beaver Creek and Green County bonds and levies, but I will let all of you be the judge of that after they get done talking. No pressure, guys. 1983, Richard Noble sets a new land speed record at the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, driving 633 miles an hour. That 
I would never do, especially in 1983. And then uh, in 2010, the Supreme Court added a third female justice uh, when Elena Kagan took her place at the end of the bench. Uh, flying through some um, local sports dominance, there wasn't a lot of activity this past week, uh, but varsity boys and varsity girls soccer teams both dominated uh, their matches. Uh, if you're looking for some things to celebrate this weekend, weekend uh, today we have Manufacturing Day and National Truckers Day. Uh, tomorrow we got to celebrate National Do Something Nice Day, uh, along with World Teachers Day. Sunday we have World Cerebral Palsy Day and National uh, Coaches Day, along with the Angel Life Day. So my question to you is, how many Rotarians does it take to paint a light bulb? Two, Angie and Graham. Possibly. It depends on how many sign up to be in the new light bulb committee that will also become a service project later on in the year. Next question, how many state reps does it take to change a light bulb? Well, apparently none because they're still debating on whether the light bulb even needs changing. And by the time they pass the bill, which changes the light bulb will have already been burned out and half the state budget along with it. How many state managers does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but they'll issue a 12 page report on how this bright idea will improve the city's efficiency. <laughs> and lastly, how many school superintendents does it take to change a light bulb? None. None, but they'll run a levy campaign promising new lights for the district and probably throw in a new football stadium while they're at it. And when the legends are back, citizens candles and say we're doing hands on learning about colonial times. <laughs> Moving on to Monday, National Bathtub Day, also National Inner Beauty Day. Tuesday, we go to International Off-Road Day, which I believe is every day for David's uh, Jeep. It's also National Cup Easter Beers Day. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a big one for us, uh, Fire Prevention Day. I know uh, Fire Marshal's stoked about that. It's also Bring Your Teddy Bear to Work or School Day. And then moving on to Thursday, Karen, if you see a bunch of people hugging Brian, that's because it is National Hug a Drummer Day. So, and then also is one of our all their fellow, fellow Rotarians uh, favorite day, Dave Stewart, as it's World Sight Day. Uh, if you're looking for some things to do this weekend, the Wagner Subaru Outdoor Experience Weekend kicks off at 11 a.m. over at the Eastwood Metro Park. And if you drive a nice Subaru like Denny does here, uh, you get special up close VIP parking. Yeah. Uh, it's also Try a Truck and Fire Department Open House or the city's municipal maintenance facility, which is always a great time and an awesome turnout. Tuesday, uh, Beaver Creek and Dayton Chambers are hosting Speed Networking, which is similar to dating, just without the awkwardness. Yeah. That'll be over at On Par Entertainment from 4.30 to 8.30. And then Thursday uh, morning from 8 to 10 over at Fresh Time will be Coffee with a Cop. Yes. Moving on to today's fine so we can get to the speakers. Uh, the standard ones, if you're not wearing a badge, that will be a dollar. If you were late and you know who you are, that is a dollar. If you have not signed up for one of the committees that Eric has sent out messages about, that will be a dollar. But if you verbally agree with Eric today to join one of the committees, you are free from that dollar fine. And in honor of the upcoming Subaru Outdoor Experience, if you've never had the distinct joy of driving any of the world's greatest all-symmetrical all-wheel drive cars, that'll be a dollar. I'll throw a happy buck out there. Happy five bucks. Um, I've been wanting a nice oak roll top desk for a couple of years. Driving late night this morning. One sat on somebody's front yard. I said, man, what you do with the roll top desk? He said, if you'll take it, I'll help you load it in the truck. So, a couple dollars for him to help me load it. And uh, very fun. Do you have someone to help you unload it? No. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I got a happy buck because Josh is back. Okay. I'll give it half a buck. I'd like to thank Joe Jenkins for lending me his um, generator. Um, we were out of power for four and a half days, so I appreciate that, Joe. I'm going to keep that on. Anything else? I'm a very happy group. Yeah. Uh, uh, you might have some more in Glaston. I haven't worn Glaston since the 80s. 
of getting cataract surgery in three weeks and your heart contacts and got my contacts out for two weeks so they can measure my eyes and get them right. So I had to buy glasses just to do it. And so it's really pain because I got to go from this and I got to go to the other. So I don't know which one got that on. No. Second half of buckets. My wife and I spent a week in Walla Walla, Washington. You ever been to Walla Walla? It's great. You leave at 645 from Cincinnati. You arrive at 11.50 p.m. in Walla Walla. And you go and you sample some of the best wines in the world of wineries that only make about a thousand cases a year. And then you catch a 5 a.m. flight back out of Walla Walla to Seattle to get home to Cincinnati at 6 p.m. <clears throat> On the turn. Right. Yeah. It's the second one o'clock. I've been volunteering at the Fairfield Elementary School. What used to be called the Fox and Trot hey. fundraiser, whatever it was, is now called the Kindness Challenge. Mm -hmm. I've been having an absolute course with kids to run. And every grade has its own set time right to run. My grandkids run. I'm going to fifth grade there, so I'll be out there to uh, help volunteer and watch them run the course also. Are you going to demonstrate how to run the they got shot one time. I did. Is that a big mistake? Yeah. It's one of those things that your brain breaks a check and your body can't catch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Any stuff like that. Anyone else? I got a talk. This Sunday, Junior, our name is getting top us. Being church. Okay, I guess it would look no more happy people here. So um, take a try. Take a try. Thank you. 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 Thank Zero nine. Wait, Danny, just blocks. Do you want to show them? And if we don't see it go to our Christmas basket, one, and you're looking at one of the little ones. Hey, yeah. And thanks. I'll show it. Ah, we're dying. So close. Ah, so close. And the death of my throat. Say stop to you. Mm -hmm. I know this one's anything from the good of the club. Tomorrow's box day. Check your inboxes. Dude's oh, invoice is laid out on the second. It's plays back. Yeah. You can use credit cards and there's no fee. The club eats it. If you did, it's a good one. We've been trying to work out and have a Halloween party. Yeah, for Halloween. Oh, and the dates are just not working out because we kind of waited a little bit late to start thinking about it. Uh, you know, everybody's got schedules and stuff. We were looking at right after Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, right after Halloween on November 2nd, and there's something come up about that date. So, we're gonna, it'll have to be maybe next meeting, we'll tell you something definite. It might be a, a fall festival. Fall, you know, cook out to get together. Uh, Amanda and Joe had graciously donated their home. <laughs> Not the home, but they're getting Maybe share some tape on the wood. Uh, you won't go to that. Okay. But we're going to have to let you know the next meeting is later. Uh, so you can plan something. We do. Get one to call it a Halloween party in November. You know, kind of like you can call it. We, we still want to do something, but we'll let you know. So you can think of more to come on that. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> I have a couple of things. Uh, this Saturday and tomorrow from 12 to 5, we're helping the Lions Club pack uh, food boxes for Feed the Creek at, uh, at the Senior Center. I know right now I've got Chuck Grant going to be there, Bob Choi, Danny Charvey, David Brandenburg, and myself. So we'll be there to help with that. Anybody else would like to come? Come to Senior Center? Hey, 
Is that like a just pop in any time between 12 and 5, or do you literally need someone 12 to 5? No, no, that's just kind of fun. I don't expect it to go to 5. Oh, gosh. So, I mean, if you want to just pop in, please pop in. You know, I can't be there till 1, 1 30 because of the tri trip. But anyway. also, next Thursday, October 10th, is the Sing Out Polio karaoke thing that the uh, Rotary Justice is doing at On Park starts at 6 30. So if you go out there, I'm not going to ask any of you to sing, but support the, support the district there. And another thing, if you do you know, are involved in any activities representing Rotary, take some pictures so we can pass them along. But we have them on our website, and we can pass them along to the district as well. And with all that said, Mr. Lampton. Oh, I'm sorry. David. Quick thing. If uh, anybody has any input, if you want to let Joe or Don or myself or Amanda know uh, if he has some ideas or want to get on the committee to help hand this thing, we're going to let us know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good day, everyone. Good. All right. So we're going to do the uh, presentations. Uh, I'm going to provide just a real quick little bit of information on issue one. I printed off some ballots, put them down on the tables. So you can see the Secretary of State's the ballot language that you'll actually see um, when you go to vote. I'm going to read a couple of things from it. The actual language is 36 pages long and really small type. <laughs> and I'll quote a couple of things out of that, but I strongly urge everyone to educate themselves on issue one. It's a constitutional amendment. Establishes a new taxpayer-funded commission of appointees required to gerrymander the boundaries of the state legislative and congressional districts to favor either one of the two largest political parties in the state of Ohio. According to a formula based on partisan outcomes, as the dominant factor, so that each district shall contain single member districts that are geographically contiguous, but state and congressional districts will no longer be required to be compact. All right, so stop here. What does that mean? Compact means in the current under the current rules, they try to keep cities or counties and stuff as whole as possible. That that's gone, so they can pie shape cities and do it. Would do it that one. Awesome. Um, B counties, townships, um, Ohio can be split into small districts. So again, you know, for example, my district's all Green County, but but it, it, a change could be I can I the district could include um, parts of Miami, parts of Montgomery, and Green. So because that compact rule goes away. Um, let me finish that sentence. And preserving communities of interest will be secondary to the formula that is based on partisan political outcomes. Now, I'm going to skip a couple of lines, and then it says, prohibit any citizen from filing a lawsuit challenging the redistricting plan in any court, except if the lawsuit challenges the portion, proportionality standard applied by the commission. So, so basically, it, it takes citizens' abilities away to sue, except for that proportionality rule, okay? Um, so to go through the rest of it, uh, it creates a $7 million, and it could be more than that because if there's lawsuits and they gotta pay the defendant and stuff like that. Um, current, our current system, there's no additional cost. The people that are drawing it are already even paid. Um, <clears throat> Yes. Yeah, this one's the one I thought I'm pulling right from the actual amendment, language of the amendment. So it creates a public commission, just folks like you and I. They don't describe who can be on the commission, they describe who cannot right. be on the commission. Okay. <laughs> the following persons shall be ineligible to serve on the commission, bar party screening panel, or special master staff professional. Current elected or appointed officials to federal, state, or local office and their immediate family members. So if you're elected, you can't be on the commission, and neither can any of your family members. 
persons who have served in any federal, state, or local elected or appointed position in Ohio for any uh, period during the current year or immediately preceding six years or any of their family members, also ineligible. Persons who have, who have been a candidate for a federal, state, or local elective office during the current year preceding six years and their immediate family members. So if you ran for office and didn't win, you're excluded from that, and so is your wife and kids. <laughs> Persons who have served as an officer, paid consultant, or contractor to any political party, political action committee, campaign committee, at the federal, state, or local level, for any period, current year, immediately preceding six years, and their immediate family members. Persons who have served as a staff member, paid consultant, or contractor, for any elected official candidate, federal, state, local, any period exceeding six years, and their family members. And persons who have a registered lobbyist, legislative agent, state of Ohio, and you got the rest of it, six years, and their family members. Uh, I didn't see it on here, so I'm not going to read it, but it did say something about um, military officers preceding six years and their family members. Please make sure you educate yourself. On the other side of the issue, please. Okay. A partisan issue driving the rotary. However, speak on behalf of those who say yes. It's okay. Do I need a microphone? Sure. Get the facts on issue one. This is from the committee that wrote the amendment, headed by. The, the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the State of Ohio, Maureen O'Connor. This is following several lawsuits of the maps that were drawn in 2020 and 2020, not following the 2020 census, that were all found to be unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. So, get the facts on issue one. When politicians draw bias, ridiculously shaped Voting districts in favor of known interest is called gerrymandering. Gerrymandering. And Ohio is one of the most gerrymandered states. The politicians who drew voting maps, the Ohio Supreme Court ruled were unconstitutional seven times, would do anything to stay in power, including trying to trick voters with lies on your ballot itself about issue one. Get the facts and reject the politicians' lies. Issue one will end gerrymandering by empowering citizens, not politicians, to draw fair districts using an open and transparent pro process. It will create the 15-member Ohio Citizens Redistricting Commission made up of Democrats, Republicans, and independent citizens who broadly represent different geographic areas and demographics of the state. Ban current or former politicians, political party officials, and lobbyists from sitting on the commission. Require fair and impartial districts by making it unconstitutional to draw voting districts that discriminate or favor any political party or individual politician. Require the commission to operate under an open and independent process. The ballot language was challenged by those by the committee that acquired over 800,000 signatures of Ohioans to get it on the ballot. The vote in the Supreme Court was the four Republican members voted against the, the challenge to the ballot language. The three Democratic uh, Supreme Court members voted in favor, so by a 4-3 vote. So this is a partisan issue, folks. This is not... Uh, the same as just a levy or something like that. This is partisan, and you need to read it and know what's going on. Thank you. I agree with Eric. We need to read it and know what's going on. Okay, uh, so each folks uh, coming up next will have five minutes. I will time you. Are you five minutes? It's okay. Uh, appreciate everyone coming out today. First up, we have our city charter uh pete now I'll refresh my memory are there two separate issues okay so he's going to go over this that doesn't mean you get 10 minutes sorry so we had to pick five um but he will he'll, so there's two issues that you 
We'll vote separately on. Right. Um, so here we go. Five minutes. I'll need to, but I'll need the rest of my three minutes for my 12 page uh, light bulb analysis. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, as a city manager and city representative, I'm not advocating for or against any of these changes. I'm simply providing the information and hopefully clarifying any misunderstandings. So uh, there's always going to be disclaimers from us. Uh, <clears throat> extra table should be two ordinances. Ordinance 2414 uh, is the first one. It's uh, ballot three, ballot issue three, if approved. It would amend section 4.02 of the city's charter by extending term limits for the mayor and council members from the current two four-year terms to three four-year terms. Again, the information is on your table and has uh, exactly the word changes, but in its simplest form, changes it from two to three to approve for term limits. Uh, ordinance 2415 is ballot issue four. If approved, it, there are several charters that uh, go between sections 4.08 and 11.08. Uh, these amendments are aimed at enhancing transparency and efficiencies as well as reducing city costs. Uh, these uh, make basically make notifications um, of meetings, publications, and uh, of city documents uh, and update some administrative procedures. So Ohio law changed on what you have to advertise. We spend about $25,000 a year on advertisements that really are not needed. Any of you read the Xenia Gazette to get updated on the advertisements of what's coming before uh, the city? Probably not. Uh, this would, uh, again, just reinforce what Ohio law allows us to do. Uh, increasing the hours notice given to council members is an example of it. Wherever practical, instead of 12 hours, to be no less than 24 which again, we give public notice that requires 24 hours notice before a special meeting. So I guess we could give public notice of a 24 hour meeting, but only let council get done a 12 hour notice of it. Doesn't make any sense. So the whole thing needs updated. So everybody has 24 hour notice of a public meeting. Another example is um, again, public notices of public hearings on such media forums as the city's website instead of all the printed publications. Uh, of course, when allowed by law, there are some things that no matter what has not changed in Ohio law that we still do have to have publications, including these charter notices that we're spending like $4,000 to put into the Zinga Gazette because it's required by law for us to, to do so um, for two consecutive weeks. So uh, if these are made, uh, again, these uh, recommendations came before city council by the Charter Retain Commission. Um, neither of these ballot issues, let me be very, very clear, neither of these ballot issues nor any of the proposed charter changes covered by the ballot issues address or makes any changes to section 10.05 income tax. Okay. Um, yeah, so cut that rumor in. Um, and, and last thing I'll say is that, uh, the, the ordinance is here. Uh, if you want to hear more by what council justifications, if you go to the July 22nd meeting, July 22nd, July 22nd, YouTube video, city council, if you go to the 27 minutes through, you can hear exactly why they supported these two charter amendments uh, in their own words and why they think uh, they are important. The 27 minutes, July 22nd, YouTube. And again, at your tables, they are there for your review, and I will be around at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. He took more than three minutes. Just so. <laughs> All right, so he's got a minute left. Um, I have a light bulb joke, too. It's a drummer joke. How many drummers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Seven. One to hold the light bulb and six to drink until the room spins. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's right. Okay, next up, City Parks, Monica Jones. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, just quickly, again, thanks for letting me be here, joining you on this lunch. Same disclaimer, I'm not advocating for or against. I'm just providing uh, factual information and some data points that you might find interesting. First question, why does the city need another levy? 
Well, issue five, thanks for making those ballots available. Issue five will read um, an additional tax for the benefit of the city of Beaver Creek for the purpose of parks and recreational purposes. Pretty vague, um, pretty broad. Let me address the additional language. In the absence of an income tax, nearly all of the city services are funded through a specific levy, including parks, recreation, and culture. And as a matter of best practice, the city uses a five-year model to estimate revenues and expenses. And 2024 is the fifth year of the existing uh, model. So revenue generated from the current continuous levies is insufficient to continue to support the estimated cost of operating the department. This estimated deficit is $250,000 beginning in 2025 without additional funding, and it would grow from there. So what does the levy fund? What is that parks and recreation purposes? It's all the things you think of when you think of our parks. It's the senior center. It's our parks. It's our playgrounds. It's our trails. It's our bike hubs. It's the programs, the leagues, the summer camps. It's a, a fabric of our community. And it's all the necessary staff and the supplies and materials to support those programs and facilities. So if approved, the funds generated from the levy will help hire three additional positions. Two would be in parks maintenance and an additional staff member for the Beaver Creek Senior Center to assist specifically with transportation, but also some daily operations and other programming. An important note, we currently have five full-time parks maintenance staff maintaining 24 parks and four community hubs, which cover about 434 acres. It's a lot for them to keep up with. Um, there would also be additional funding for approximately $200,000 annually. This would cover or help fund additional equipment replacement so that staff has the tools they need to maintain that 434 acres. It would also allow for additional um, facility improvements, playground replacements, asphalt and facility maintenance, and upgrades and trail improvements. Of the 16 playgrounds in our system, three neighborhood playgrounds are coming up for replacement. Those were installed in 2003, or two, yeah, 2003, and two of them were in 2005. So they're reaching the end of their useful life. There's also um, a larger community playground. Maybe you're all familiar with the playground at Dominic Lupino Parks, pretty extensive. It was installed in 2002. So it also needs to be replaced on the horizon. These funds would help make sure there's enough money to continue that replacement plan. There's also funds for accessibility improvements to continue to make strides on the city's um, 220 ADA transition plan. So this is to make sure the city remains compliant with ADA standards. It would include enhancements to play areas, to restrooms, to parking lots. It would provide accessible routes to facilities and to our amenities. I want to make the same disclaimer the city manager did. This operating levy doesn't include any money for the development of Spring House. That was last year's levy. It failed. That park is going to be maintained, but there won't be development coming out of levy funds. We are pursuing grant opportunities, so you might see activity out there, but this operating is not for that. So how much does it cost? This is a continuous levy at a rate not to exceed 0.49 bills. So for each dollar of taxable value, it amounts $17 for a $100,000 trade value starting in 2025. For context, the 2022 census data has the average home value in Beaver Creek at 245,000. So that means a family in an average house in our community would contribute just under $42 annually. On the eve of Prime Day, Prime Day annual membership is $139. So su support of our parks annually is less than a family potentially pays for a Prime membership. Why is it needed? Beyond the research that's demonstrated as far as countless benefits that green space and recreational program and amenities provide like physical and mental health, enhancing child development and learning, economic and uh, economic development and tourism, our participation and demand in our parks has seen significant growth. And that's an awesome problem to have, but here's some facts so you can understand that context. Since 2019, program registrations have more than doubled. In 2019, there were roughly 45,000 registration store programs. We finished 2023 with just under 10,500. Similarly, wait lists have gone from 65 in 2019 to 636 patrons being on a wait list for a program in 2023. Senior center memberships have grown from 15,025 to almost 2,250. 
So the levy would support all that continued growth, usage, and demand on our parks program systems and facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Cool. All right, next up, the Paul Watton for Haver Creek City Schools. Thanks. There's, uh, you know, the other teacher I mean, we've got a little thing to throw up here, a little visual for you. So don't get me started yet. Can't start me yet. I can't start me yet. <laughs> Get the break because it's not his fault. Don't want that. <laughs> What's your status uh, right there? Yep, you got it. I know some of this information is repetitive uh, from the last time that we presented, uh, but we do have some additional information. So I'm going to skip it through. Uh, this is about issue 16, which is the bond issue for the school district. Looking at the uh, bond issue, one of the, we, after our location, we went and started looking at our the additional spaces that we have. So I just want to share this information with you. Currently today, we have three um, portables at three of our elementary schools. Those portable units have six classrooms in them for a total of 18 classrooms. If we started looking at other buildings. Uh, today, we have 20 rooms in seven of our buildings that are shared by two teachers, five rooms and four buildings shared by three teachers. We have non-instructional space. Uh, which is hallways under uh, stairwells. And we had a lot of pictures, but I only grabbed one set of pictures, kind of give you a, an idea of what that space looks like with hallways and um, down stairwells, so on and so forth. So this is typical of what we're seeing in our elementary spaces. So that there is clearly a need. So we start looking at enrollment for the district. This is projected, uh, through uh, an organization that we use, and they, their projections have been pretty spot on. Today, I want to point at the bottom left corner. We said we have 80 more students today than we did at this time last school year. So you can see that that growth is really, truly happening. And then, as you can see, as we project out uh, to the uh, 33 school year, uh, we're looking at about 8,827 kids. Uh, we're hoping to build a buffer in just to give us some additional growth. So why now? Current enrollment continues to see it throughout our community. Uh, very thankful that we have great relationships with the city and the township. A couple of weeks ago, uh, they shared some great information. Uh, the city is expecting an additional 5,000 additional residents in the city over the next 30 years. And the township is expecting an additional 5,000 residents in the next five to 10 years. And we know that those residents come with little kids. Uh, in a nutshell, this is what the uh, bond issue would fund, would fund the creation of a new high school. Again, it is not a high school issue, it is a capacity issue, but the process of this planning for this bond issue identified the need to update and uh, create a new high school, which would then converts our current high school into a middle school, and our two middle schools into elementary schools. That way, every student in the district has an opportunity to go through a new high school. In addition, uh, 15 million of this plan goes towards uh, three gyms. Those gyms would be at Fairbrook, Valley, and Parkwood Elementary Schools. Those three schools today currently have like a gymatorium, so they eat in their cafeteria, uh, and we have to stop having gym during that time. Shaw Elementary has the latest edition, uh, so this is what Shaw has, so we would mimic that. Just give you an idea on location of our 89-acre site. It is down here at the bottom in this yellow corner. Uh, that's on the corner of South Alpha, Bellbrook, and Indian Ripple. And uh, I think you've seen this one before when we presented, but this is a site concept of that site. Obviously, the one on the left is what it looks like today. And uh, this is what our architect is uh, projecting it would look like. 1,700 parking spots, 
obviously because we would, we don't have the space around it. Uh, improvement of all the roads in that area would be funded not only by uh, the this project, but also by the, the uh, township and uh, the county, mainly the county. So what is the master facility plan? Again, it's a new 912. It's converting our current high school into two middle schools. Uh, that would be Ankeny and Coy. Uh, I'm sorry, converting the high school into one middle school and then converting our two middle schools into elementary schools, adding uh, three gyms to three of the elementary schools and then uh, other capital improvements. Timeline, I'll just tell you this. If you're a fourth grader today, you would be a freshman in this new school if it would be approved this November, just to give you some perspective. Budget summary, $265 million project, 4.9 to be paid over 37 years, <laughs> comes out up to $172 uh, per $100,000 of evaluation. One thing I wanna focus on is the top one, we do not anticipate needing any new operating levy when this project is completed. So we do not need a operating levy to run this once it's done. Last piece is uh, we are a member of the ELF project, so we will get money from the state for this project. Thank you, Rich. And I will be around here for questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Well done, sir. Thank you. And finally, we have uh, for county parks, Pete and Chuck, you both? Just Chuck. Just Chuck. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Yep. Uh, thanks for the invite to come out and talk uh, today. Um, back in 2015, the Park District passed its first levy. It renewed in 2019. And part of that, the, the Park District wanted to make sure of uh, several key, key things. They wanted to support, show support to other agencies, other nonprofits, and things like that. And one of the big things in 2015 was, um, if, and both of these are five-year levies that uh, that they had, um, they made a promise that they would support Owen's place for the first five years for a tune of uh, $500,000. They thought that was really, really important. Owen's place is give something very, very special to this area that in a, in a um, situation for people that, that have those needs and things. So they passed those uh, in, in 2015. And what they got to thinking about is sometimes you start thinking that you know what everybody wants. So that can get very, very dangerous because you should focus on something that the public really didn't want. And so they went out, surveyed, asked the park users what they would like to see in the parks. They asked the county residents what they wanted to see. And there was uh, several key aspects that they wanted. They wanted family programming from youth to seniors. They wanted playgrounds. Jeez. They wanted restrooms. They wanted seating. And they wanted us to take care of our deferred maintenance that had built up prior to that uh, for so many years. And that's what we did. We focused on that. We wanted to make sure that um, we were good stewards of the taxpayers' money. So we focused on those things. Um, Rick Hammond is with me here today. He's going to pass out uh, an accomplishment sheet. Um, he's going to hand those out probably now, I think, and show you. And this shows what we've used some of the money for, some of the, help, the improvements within inside of the parks and Green County, I can all three Green County. So, um, and it just shows what we use those for. And the big thing with the programming, um, as he passes those out and things like that. So, um, other main opportunities that the Park District wanted to do is show their support all throughout the county. Some grant funds are made grants funds available to cities, townships, township park districts to fur fur further their mission as well. Um, with playgrounds, restrooms, things of that nature, and and show the support that this is a county-wide levy that can help everybody within inside the county. Um, one other key aspect in 2015, and it's carried through this whole time, we are blessed to have a bike trail system within Green County that has eight different uh, owners through it. It's managed through a management agreement from all of those through our department, we are the day-to-day -day operations for uh, the bike paths, but there's eight different owners, being park district being one, the county commissioners being another one, and then all the local jurisdictions. Prior to the levy, 
if there was a long-term care thing, such as paving, big problems, issues on the bike paths, um, those jurisdictions were apt to um, pay their fair share. Um, uh, part of, if we went out for a grant, they had to pay their percentage of it. Since the 2015 levy, they have not had to pay anything. Those levies, we dedicated to keep them going. And I'm happy to say since that time, um, every bike path, and we're finishing up one right now, has been resurfaced. Um, our long-term maintenance plans for those bike paths have given us longevity of 22 to 25 years before they had to be resurfaced. We went in every five years, did crack filling and uh, seal coating of those paths, and that, was as that asphalt has lasted 25 years before we've done that. So these levy funds have helped maintain those bike paths without putting um, extra burden on, on this, the uh, landowners for that. So that would continue as well. Um, the, on the program side, we have partnered with a lot of different agencies. We do our own public uh, programming, mostly free. We pay programming just for materials and things, but we've shared that also with Beaver Creek, Fairborn, um, other departments within inside the county. Uh, we partner with Beaver Creek and Fairborn for the wellness walks. Uh, Mr. Hendon's one of the uh, celebrities that guides those walks every every month or every other month. And we've also partnered with the Department of Developmental Disabilities, Veteran Services, just to name a couple. We work with Ohio State, OSU Extension Master Gardener programs. We um, had funds and, and supported the Little Miami Watershed Network, BW Greenway, Beaver Creek Wetlands. All of us have the, basically the same mission, provide services for the residents of Green County and provide a recreational place for people to go, make memories with their families, and have recreational opportunities for wellness and health. Um, with that, this levy will, would help with that. We've also shown support to colleges and universities and research project, projects and things of that nature. So well, this levy is for a renewal. It is a um, five-year renewable levy based off the 2015 property evaluations. No increases is the same thing was passed in 2015 with asking for a renewal on that. It's 0.9 mil for five years at a cost of $21 per $100,000 property value. And I'll say the same as disclaimer, not advocating, advocating just informing you of what uh, the funds have been used for. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we have a few minutes left. To a couple of things on voting. Uh, early voting starts October 8th in person uh, on Ledbetter Road at the Board of Elections office. So you can start that day, Monday. It's a Monday, Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Um, and then you can check their website for the early voting hours. I believe there will be at least two weekend early voting time slots, Saturday, Sunday. Um, there has been a change. In the past, you could go on the Monday before the actual election day. You cannot do that now. We we erased it because the boards of elections need to get paid, okay, for Tuesday, because those folks are showing up at the polling locations about 5:30 in the morning. So we give them, we've given them that day off. So that Monday, there will be no in-person voting. But I believe that weekend approaching that there will be some early voting and opportunities. So make sure you check your calendar. If you can't make it on election day, there's tons of opportunity to go and vote in person. One other thing I tell folks, this is an open vote test, okay? So go all the way through the ballot. And if you don't know somebody, you're allowed to bring paper and notes with you. Do your research and write your answers down. So when you come, you can look. It's okay. It's It's not a... It's not a have to memorize everything, okay? Uh, and then one other thing that is a change is that uh, for Supreme Court judges, and if I'm recalling correctly, uh, district court judges, there will be a party designation behind those names now where they're not used to be. Um, it, is a, it is a partisan election, so they will have the D or the R behind their names as a, as a designation 
um, for that. Uh, so we got a few more minutes. Does anybody have questions for any of the, the panelists that presented? <laughs> Who's your question for, Dave? Hey, Pete. Hey, the way I read this uh, proposal, this election is effective immediately for the term limits for the uh, council. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure there there's no election this year, so it doesn't impact anything in November. So the next city council election period is November of 25. So yes, it will be in place. So for any council member that would be in their second year term now, um, if this would pass, uh, they would be able then to run next year for a third term. There's uh, one person, I think, are, uh, in that boat, so to speak. Very good. Uh, thank you. Jim? Uh, I have a question on the, on the school. Yes, okay. uh, I, I live north of up here, and the new school is going to be way south. How long would my kids spend on the school bus coming and going? So good question. We are, we What we've looked at is uh, when we have to redistrict, um, there would be two primary routes, obviously. One would be going over top of, fa uh, not factory, one going over, the other one going over Trayvine. Um, obviously, we, we do have buses on 35 that have that turn off of factory, which isn't too bad of a turn because you're going straight across down and then back up and up the hill. So um, we will have to look at re how we redistrict that, but as you can imagine, it will be a farther ride because I live in the same area. I live on the north side of Beaver Creek in the township as well, so it'll be it'll be a further drive. Yeah, I, for our students. I I can't vote for that till I find a different location for the high school, and and my neighbors up here feel the same way. Well, uh, that location was purchased like 17 years I, ago, I and uh, it, if we want to sell that property, we have to sell it back to the township. There's a deed on it. It's not. It's what about a what about flip flopping, putting a, a middle school on that piece of property and redoing the high school? Um, obviously, it's something the community could look at. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. It, it's not going to fly with me. Sure, sure, I understand it. Fair. Well, it's way more expensive to go in and do an extensive remodel on an old building to get it modern versus building something from scratch. Uh, yeah, the OFCC, which is kind of a partner with us right now, that's one of the pieces that they look at is what does it cost to remodel. Um, and we're not we're not in need so much of remodel. We just need space. I mean, we're struggling. One of the one of the reasons we didn't look at the middle school elementary approach. Um, was two reasons. One, we thought it was a Band-Aid for maybe 10 years uh, would address growth for that time. The other uh, reason was the uh, high school allows every kid in our community the opportunity to go through a brand new high school instead of just one section of where you live gets the new school. So Okay, and as a follow-up to that, uh, is it true that students have to like walk through in, from between buildings to get classes in the rain and the snow? Uh, and the heavy winds and the, the hurricanes. And so currently today in our high school campus, the freshman school, kids do commute back and forth. There is a awning that is that is there, but that is true. What are you also talking about the portable units? That they're going out. Right now, yeah, at our elementaries, the, the, yeah, students in our portable units do. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that was the other thing that was I don't think. I want to say, could it could be a lot of money for this levy, a lot of money, but I'm voting yes. Yeah, those portable units, most of them don't have bathrooms, correct? Correct, only one tray mine. So the portable units have no bathrooms. So now it takes a kid, what, five, six, seven minutes to go to the bathroom. That's a pretty big interruption in their instructional day. Um, and the doors, because of security, the doors lock, so they have to be escorted back and forth yeah. because of the of the locking of the doors. It, it, it isn't just an eyesore, folks. It is a big pain in the butt for the schools to manage these kids in and out of these portable units. Bob? Are you landlocked or land limited, or could you add on to the building? Uh, so our current high school right now, when you look at it, it's the, so we're kind of landlocked. We're at, we do have the land labs next door, those uh, parcels of, of property that you see that are land labs. 
we, those were accepted years ago by a deed, which required, which requires us just to maintain them. And when I say maintain, the tree falls down there, we can't go cut the tree up. So we're not permitted to build in those areas. So those areas are if were donated and they need to remain the way they are. So we really don't have space there. But even if we added on to the high school, the pressure that we're feeling at the elementary is where we're where we're feeling it. So um, that's why the committee of 60 that were gathered kind of came up with this plan. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So with with the new proposal, Beaver Creek is gaining new students every year, correct? Correct. Okay. And per the state, we legally have to educate them. Correct. correct? Yeah. So it's a question of do we want to pay today's prices for a new school or tomorrow's, right? Very, very well said. Yeah. Oh, wait, we had an individual say the other day, and this is this uh, comment from the individual, not from me, but this will be the cheapest, cheapest you can ever build a building. I'm going and I'll also say if you don't believe we need a new school, go there and teach for a few days at different times of the year and see what it's like in some of those classrooms as far as temperature and everything else goes. I, I, I taught in that school as a sub for 10 years. So. And I taught the other schools as well. We need a new school. It doesn't matter. It's going to hurt. It's going to cost us a lot of money, but we need it. Thanks, everybody. Okay, yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you guys for coming and, and sharing with us. I think that's probably happens in elections. Sometimes people just go vote. They don't even look at what they're voting for. They have the opportunities like this gives us it gives us a chance to talk about that. So educate yourself. Care how you vote. But make sure that you vote the way you're, you should vote in your heart and soul. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, thank you guys for being here. Next week's meeting, we have Rachel Bain with the Sunshine Book Club. Our readers are Beth and David Kuzak again. That was one you signed up for. You want to get today was one you in for. Uh, there will be a board meeting following next week's meeting. And keep your eye on the upcoming programs at newbreakrotary.com and our Facebook page. Anything else for the Good Club? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who got up and gave us information. Whether we say it or not, we appreciate all of you and what you do for our community. <laughs> so those guys that we're going to be with tomorrow, look forward to seeing you, and then you all stand at the discussion. Yeah. My pledge of attention in the mind, in the sinister, in the thought, and one nation for God. Yes, Paul. Very thank you all. Have a great weekend. Gentlemen, have a new scary night. Yeah, it will scare everybody's life. Henrik, thank you. Sure. Uh, I have a tender girl. Because I agree with you. Still,
Do you want to give it to me now? Yeah, you can give me a check. I will take money from people anytime. Anytime. Well, 